We just wrapped up a 12-team Roto salary cap draft. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is Friday, March 10th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And before we get into your team, Scotty, talk to me about salary cap, also known as auction strategy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, it's very complicated and could fill 50 minutes, much less five. Uh, But I will say that uh, what I tried to do is return to an approach I used prior to the juice ball era that was very successful for me. And I think is going to be successful again now that the middle class has returned its starting pitcher. And now that high end hitting production is much harder to find. And that's that's the stars and scrub s- strategy. Now, if if the league is much deeper than this, this is twelve teams standard roto. If the league's much deeper than this, it's it's ill advised to go stars and scrubs because the scrubs are going to be legitimate scrubs. But I think we're at a level of just enough shallowness, three hundred sixty players rostered that it's justifiable because obviously the stars are great, of course, um, but the scrubs. You know, as as long as you are able to spend two to three dollars on each of them, don't just don't be stuck bidding on nothing but one dollar players and and missing your chance over and over again as somebody bids up your nominations. As long as you don't do that, the scrubs can be high upside players or or even just non scrubs that slip through the cracks because everybody overspent on the studs and 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 so a, a, like a legitimately good player falls to you for two to three dollars and and then the waiver wire is pretty robust so i i think that's the way to go is just you know make sure you have a really strong nucleus and then rely on the volatility um especially in the pitcher ranks to uh to kind of piece your way to a dominant roster let's start off with your hitters here scotty and you wound up with christian betancourt and travis darno at catcher then vinnie pasquantino jose altuve nolan arenado Corey seager Nico Horner and Josh Bell as your infielders in the outfield. Aaron Judge, Trey Mancini, Cedric Mullins, Jake Fraley, Jake McCarthy, and Garrett Mitchell. And really, people could see here that outside of Vinny Pasquantino and Jake McCarthy, you really Mm -hmm. either had 20-plus hitters or five or below. And that was part of the plan. Yeah. For the amount they cost. Yeah, that's that's it right there. Stars and scrubs. And, you know, that that infield especially, you see it. Seager at short, Arenado at third, Altuve at second. Pasquantino was more of a mid-range target, but a mid-range target that I think has high end upside. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where a lot of my power is going to come from. But I haven't mentioned Aaron Judge, who was my most expensive player of, of all. Uh and and so then beyond them, I spent for Cedric Mullins to make sure I because none of those none of those expensive hitters otherwise gave me steals. So I, I was willing to stretch a little for for Cedric Mullins. He he he's more on the uh, stars side of the stars and scrubs equation. We haven't gotten to pitching yet, but I will point out that I I did get a hero ace in Sandy Alcantara for twenty eight dollars. So that's basically where all my money went. And then it was just a matter of filling in the gaps around those players, that great infield, the the um Aaron Judge, Cedric Mullins, and Jake McCarthy. Mullins and McCarthy obviously providing me with lots of speed. And then the the um the hero SP in uh Sandy Alcantara. Beyond that group of players, everybody else costs five dollars or less. It most cost three dollars or less. But I'm really happy with the way it turned out. All right, well, let's the talk about offense ab- and, and we'll get into the pitching. Let's talk about some of those pitchers. You talk, you mentioned uh, Sandy Alcantara, but you also got Lucas Giolito, Jose Barrios, Chris Bassett, Tyler Malley, Justin Steele, and Jordan Montgomery, and then Paul Seawald and Ryan Helsley. So outside of Sandy Alcantara, you didn't spend more than $8 on any other pitcher on your team. Yeah, and the, the $8 one was a reliever, obviously, Helsley. My second most expensive starting pitcher was $3. But I think there's a lot to like here. Again, I'm leaning into the volatility of this position and the fact that there can actually be um, more emergent options now that it's now that ev- not now that not every pitcher is so vulnerable to the home run because the juice ball is gone. So um, you know, Giolito and Barrios, guys we considered aces or near aces at this time a year ago. 
Tyler Malley, you know, he's just a year removed from a 200 strikeout season. Uh, Justin Steele is probably my least favorite of my entire pitching staff, but he, you know, he came on strong late and showed some upside, particularly with the the strikeouts. Jordan Montgomery, just a very safe, stable option. And Chris Bassett, another safe, stable option. So I think, I think that's okay, uh, considering you got Sandy Alcantara leading the way. But then you look at my bench, the reserves round, and some of the pitchers that lasted till there. I mean, these are the kind of pitches I usually draft for my lineup in a regular snake draft. So the fact I got them in the reserve rounds of this uh, of, of this salary cap draft, um, specifically, I'm talking Miles Michaelis, Merrill Kelly, Tyler Anderson. So you add those three to the seven starting pitchers in my starting lineup. I think I'm going to be in good shape. I mean, at the start of the year, I'm going to kind of maximize matchups in two start weeks. And, uh, you know, obviously some of these, some of these pitchers will be weeded out because they don't, they don't, uh, they don't pass muster, but, um, I, I think enough of them will that my pitching staff isn't going to be like any kind of vulnerability for me. Really. All I right. love that. I got to like ratio darling, save sources and Ryan Helsley and Seawald for a combined 11 bucks. Yeah, that was more than I spent on my top closer, which was Rysel Iglesias for 15. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, and if you want to see all of the results, you can listen to the full-length Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again on tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> 